But first tonight, firefighters scramble to save more than 100 people from a high rise in downtown Raleigh. I'm Angela Taylor. And I'm Marius Payton. A fire started on the ninth floor, sending flames shooting out of the windows. CBS 17's Colleen Quigley working to learn more about this fire from investigators tonight. She joins us live with this breaking news update. Well, Marius and Angela, the good news is most of those nearly 300 residents of the Glenwood Towers are going to be able to go back home tonight. But I want to step out of the way. You can look over my shoulder and see if you look up to about the ninth floor, you see the char there uh, and those busted out windows. That's where we've seen firefighters working for most of the afternoon once they put out that fire. Let's take you out to some video from what it looked like earlier today. This is around 1 o'clock as we're when we're told that fire started here at the Glenwood Towers uh, along Glenwood. Avenue. Now we know six people had to be taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation and more than 100 had to be checked out by EMS. Now many, many of the people who live here are older. We know the 54 to 93 is the ages of the people who live here. Uh, and so it, we're told it was a challenge to get a lot of the folks out who have mobility issues or are in a wheelchair. And many of the folks we spoke to who lived on the lower floor said they didn't even know anything was on fire until Raleigh police were banging on their door. But one woman who we spoke with said, she lives in the unit right above where this all started and said there was so much smoke she couldn't see her way out of the hallway to safety in the stairwell. She had to feel her way to get out of the building. I heard a boom, like glasses explosion. And then I seen fire, flames coming up to my window, then smoke coming through my floors, my windows, and my vents in the front and the back. I was I couldn't even see, so I hurried up and just ran out. Now this building is 14 stories tall, so uh, the elevators obviously were not working, so they had to bring a lot of people down uh, the stairs. Some people had to be carried down the stairs, we've been told. But again, everybody was able to make it out safely, all 297 of those residents. Now they are starting to allow people to come back into this apartment. Floors one through seven, we're told, have been given the all clear. Uh, the ninth floor is not livable, so those folks are being helped uh, by the Red Cross and the Housing Authority in Raleigh. Floors eight and then 10 through 14, still under investigation, so no word yet if those folks are going to be able to come back in here tonight. Also, uh, still the big question, how did this fire get started? That is what the fire investigators are working to figure out right now, and as soon as they let us know, we will let you know on air and online. Reporting live in Raleigh, Colleen Quigley, CBS 17 News. Colleen, thank you. And with a lot of firefighters responding to the scene, traffic in the area is a mess. These are your real-time driving conditions. This is the intersection of West Peace and Glenwood Avenue. Of course, Glenwood is where um, this um, high rise is. You can see the orange is where traffic is backed up in that area. It is not red, so that's a good news. We know traffic is getting by, but it will be slow. So if you have plans to eat downtown, Marius, or you're heading in that direction, yep. you will want to avoid it. Well, the people evacuated from this building will need a place to stay tonight. CBS 17's Robert Richardson is working to find out where they will go. He continues our team coverage live tonight from downtown Raleigh. And Robert, this was a fixed income housing. Yeah, this is part of the Raleigh Housing Authority's property, and they have mostly lower income folks living here, and they're older folks, as Colleen was mentioning, ranging in age from 54 to 93. This is one of the largest facilities that Raleigh Housing Authority has. They have been working with the Red Cross to try to provide some places to stay for people on the ninth floor tonight because it sustained substantial damage, and no one's going to be allowed back on the ninth floor this evening. Not sure how many of those units there are with about 30, 300 people and 14 floors. Could be about 20 people per, per floor, a little more than that. They're also looking through the Housing Authority to provide some longer term options for some of those people who may be displaced past tonight. Once again, they, within the past couple of hours, people on floors one through seven have been able to go back inside the eighth floor being used by firefighters and then on up. We've gotten an update from emergency management. The people above the ninth floor, we expect will be able to get back into their rooms tonight. Uh, there's still some ventilation going on by the fire department. Make sure it's clear and safe. Uh, so still some time there, uh, but we do expect everybody to get back in those uh, those floors above the ninth floor this evening.
And the firefighters have been using the lobby as a command center, and the eighth floor, once again, is what they're calling a rehab center, where the firefighters have been switching out, going up to the ninth floor. Once again, they're having to check the any for smoke damage and then for any potential pollutants that are in the air that could make some of these people sick. Some of the people who are living here are on oxygen tanks. I was asking the emergency management and fire chief if those oxygen tanks might have been an issue, might be a problem. They said that they didn't have any concerns at this time for those left in the building. Traffic starting to move again. I know you were concerned taking an eye on the traffic as this is a, a nightlife area, but but things here seem to be getting back to normal. People out and about walking, and hopefully those people who had to leave the units are able to get back inside. Colleen will keep you posted throughout the evening. Reporting live in Raleigh, Robert Richardson, CBS 17 News.